I don't want any part of the judges at all. I don't think they're going to be a factor. And the reason is that he has one more thing to prove, he says, as a heavyweight, and that is that he could knock out a man bigger than himself. Michael Spinks, 200 even. On September 20th, Michael Spinks officially became a heavyweight fighter. Presented in our pre-fight coverage of the first home Spinks match was an in-depth look at the program designed to transform Michael's body from a light heavyweight to that of a heavyweight. The program consisted of condition, nutrition, motivation, and rest. Created by conditioning expert Mackie Shulstone, the approach was an intense form of running to condition Michael for 15 rounds, weight training that simulated specific boxing motions, along with a carefully controlled diet. This program was not a substitute for Michael's daily boxing workouts, but an addition. Seven months ago, the goal was to turn Spinks into a heavyweight. Six weeks ago, phase two began, the fine-tuning of a heavyweight. I, I saw some technique that I've since uh, corrected in terms of my conditioning. Not, not him, he's fine, but from my end. So I've made about three or four critical changes based upon what I saw there. What I did, I eliminated the shorter runs. I eliminated runs of 150, 200 yards, things of that nature, and replaced it with some explosion training. The explosion training consisted of an interval running program. For instance, an interval of 440 would be run in 80 to 90 seconds. This high, intense level of training would prepare Michael for a flurry situation, a sudden burst of energy for a short period of time. The 880 interval was target training. At slightly over three minutes, the pace of this moderate distance and intensity would condition Michael to remain strong throughout a three-minute round. But even that wouldn't be enough. A 1320 to be run in approximately 515 would condition Michael's heart to work beyond that of a three-minute round. You dictate the conditioning level of the fight. Our conditioning training should be harder than what you experience in the ring. Our program is designed to make you give 100% and recover in one minute. So don't go at 50%. Don't pace yourself. Well, Mike went to his corner with his mouth open. And that's an indication of fatigue. We built up the pulse rates of 200, 210. You have to breathe to get it back. Every round, between rounds, it just seems like agony in Michael Spink's corner. But then he comes out and gives you three minutes of guts. The way I trained was, was intense training. I mean, I ran like no other. And I, at the end of every run, I was... <sighs> so in the fight, if I wasn't working to... I mean, until I felt, until, until I got to that point, it didn't feel like I was doing anything. Another addition has been the introduction of an old piece of boxing equipment, the medicine ball. For years, fighters have had this weighted ball thrust into their midsection to strengthen and develop the stomach area. But in this case, the purpose is to throw the 15-pound ball in every punching form in order to add strength and explosiveness to Michael's punches. Oh, excellent. Punch. Punch it, Mike. Push it through. Push it through. Push it through. Two and a half pound weighted gloves are worn to simulate late round fatigue. Everything simulates the way I box. He, Mackie's just, he's done research and looked into, he watches how I perform in the ring and how I throw punch, throw punches and all. And he's designed things pretty much the way I do my thing. This is where the boxes come in. People said, he's got the most unorthodox style you've ever seen. So my training is the most unorthodox thing you've ever seen. So we can't just go, you know, just front, front. We go side to side. We go, all, we go everywhere. So the first change I did was to implement the box jumping to take him and allow him to be explosive. So he must have balance and poise and explosiveness. Specific situations might involve Holmes pushing down on Michael and the strength necessary for him to come back up and follow with a punch or the footing to throw a punch while moving laterally and off balance. As logical as this approach seems to be, even today, fighters still seem to train to box rather than efficiently conditioned to box. There is something to be said about proper conditioning and the edge it provides an athlete, especially for Michael Spinks. I really don't think there's a better conditioned boxer out there. Other than me, I mean, I think I'm about the best conditioned boxer in, in the world today. Seven months ago, a highly conditioned underdog proved his critics wrong and is now the heavyweight champion. Could a victory possibly taste any sweeter?
the second time around? Well, we will have all those answers to all the questions we've posed in less than an hour. Coming up, it's the battle for the IBF Heavyweight Championship. Michael Spinks, the champion.